All right, this weekend I'm doing the front and rear brake pads and rotors and parking brake for my 2012 Nissan Pathfinder. They're all Brembo except for the parking brakes. Those are probably the rear pads. Yep. Yeah. Here are the parking brake pads I got. And there's two types of rotors because of the drum brake system for the parking brakes. I got shop towels, I got gloves. I do have some thread locker. I got some anti-seize, a ton of WD-40, more paper towel brake lube, penetrant spray, sockets, bunch of wrenches, brake cleaner, breaker bars, two different types of torque wrenches, socket set, drip pan, and some scrubby cleany things for a bunch of stuff. And I also have a woodworking bar clamp, which I use to compress things. Everything's up on jack stands. There's a jack and some wood blocking. Now the dealership price on this is 670 front, 670 rear. Uh, that's uh, $1,340 for both and then taxes here is 13% so $1,514 you can see I paid about $550 however there's also uh, oil and an oil filter for my Mazda in here so I paid just under $500 for everything so uh, a solid $1,000 savings and then I also got a $75 gift card for being the 200th customer in the store this weekend so really I only paid about 425 for all the brakes. I'm not sure if Nissan was actually going to do the parking brakes in that $1,514 uh, price estimate they gave me. So uh, easy to save $1,000 by doing this yourself. And like I said, I'm going to do the front brakes in this video and in the next video I'm going to do the rear brakes and there'll be a link in the description. And I'll throw some links in the description for everything I'm using. I got enough videos where I removed the tire off a vehicle, so I'm gonna stop doing that. I'm using a 14 mil socket and a 17 mil wrench. So I'm using the 17 mil to hold things in place, although I don't know if it's really even necessary. I guess it is. And then the 14 mil to back off the bolt. So the all I did was loosen the bolt on top and then I fully removed the bolt on the bottom. And I forgot my gloves, so I went and put those on because obviously I got to touch the camera a whole bunch of times to move it around. And that's how I ruined my last camera with dirty hands. So there's the, the bolt. They are the same top and bottom, but the slider pins are different. So you got to be careful with that. So once it's off, you should be able to tip everything vertically upward to free it from the brake pads. And then it can slide out. Just don't rip that little rubber boot because the rubber boots sort of lock into place on the slider pins. And there you go. So initial step complete. And I'm gonna need to find some place to hang that. That orange stuff isn't rust. That's just the color of the brake lube that I was using before. And I don't like it. I would prefer to get something that's like gray, black, or clear or something. I don't know why they went with orange. I think it looks disgusting. And it uh, looks like your brakes are rusting off your vehicle. Anyway, I'm just using a strap to hang it by the pistons. I've only got one spring in all of my brakes for some reason, even though there's two holes, and I'll just pull these pads off. So there's the first one. I don't think it's destroyed, and here's the second pad. It has the wear indicator on it. I put the wear indicator on the driver's side. I'm not sure if it really matters, but I did that because the driver's side pads are worse, so they're obviously the ones that are getting uh, destroyed faster. Now to get the bracket off, this is probably the harder part of this, this process. It's a uh, 19 mil for the two bracket bolts and I'm using a breaker bar and a hammer. The passenger side ones that I'm doing here weren't too bad, but the driver's side ones, uh, they were pretty stuck and I did break out a torch to warm them up. And then I got them going with a breaker bar and a hammer just like this. And I also used the hammer to tap the 19 mil on because I didn't want to damage the head of the bolts because obviously once those are stuck in there, it'd be quite an ordeal. So a little bit more careful with that. And then I broke out the regular socket to back them out the rest of the way. And I also pre-treated these with some liquid wrench. So there you go, bolts are out and they are as well uh, the same, same type of bolts. And these are the ones I put the blue Loctite on later. And then the bracket can just come off. So looks like that and I am gonna clean everything up. And I'm lucky these rotors are not really stuck on, at least in the front. And that's what it looks like. Maybe, I didn't really measure them. You, maybe they're, they're still good to, to run with another set of brake pads, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of them. 
anyway. It's probably possible to use them again. I do take a wire brush and WD-40 and clean up all the matting surfaces which the brake rotor are going to contact so that it is nice and flat and flush and then my brake rotor isn't sitting uh, off center. And likewise, I just take some WD-40 and a bunch of wire brushes and stuff and clean up the uh, mounting bracket as well. For the most part, this is just uh, for cosmetics, but for where the brake pad uh, retainer clips lock into, obviously you want it nice and clean and flat. And this is what the Brembo brake pads look like. They come with some of this Be Quiet brake loop. And I use that on uh, anything that you can see. And then I use that orange crap on uh, everything that you can't see. Like I said, I just don't like the look of it. And then you get a bag of uh, brake mounting hardware. And those clips fit into the mounting brackets very well. Now I use some anti-seize. Even though the rotor wasn't really seized on, I do throw some anti-seize in here for uh, future use. This thing has a quarter million kilometers. I'm not entirely sure if these rotors are ever going to come off again, but in case they do, I am using the anti-seize so that the rotor doesn't get stuck on in the future. And before I put the brake rotor on, I'm just going to spray it with some brake cleaner, and then I'm going to take a fresh shop towel and give it a wipe down to make sure there's no factory dust, grease, or oil on it. And once that's done, I'm going to install the brake rotor. And I'm going to take two of the vehicle lug nuts and put them on so that the brake rotor doesn't move around while I'm reinstalling the mounting bracket and uh, that sort of thing. I'm going to put the caliper mounting bracket back onto the vehicle. So like I said, I'm going to use some of the blue Loctites on the bolts and the torque specification I have for this off my Haynes manual is 136 foot pounds. So you're gonna need a larger torque wrench that's capable of going up to that torque specification. As usual, just putting it by hand and taking the normal socket to run them down all the way. And then I'm gonna take the torque wrench and torque them to the 136 foot pounds. I found for doing this, the driver's side was a little bit more difficult to work with, but 136 foot pounds is quite a bit of torque. So now I'm going to put the retainer clips back onto the vehicle. I've heard some people say to keep the old ones and use them, but I found that these new ones work fine. They lock into place, they don't fall out, and they hold the brake pads. So as far as I can tell, the, the new ones are good to go. Although I didn't immediately uh, damage or throw out the old ones, so I could put them back in, I guess, if I want to, if there's a problem with these. Um, and before I put everything back together, I'm just going to also clean the slide pins. So wipe off all the old grease. I did spray them a little bit with WD-40 just to help me clean everything up. And then I'm going to reapply some of the brake lube. And like I said, I'm using this orange stuff on things that you can't see. Make sure the rubber boot's locked into place and give the slider pin the old in out and make sure it's good to go. That one's good and it slides freely. And same deal. Like I said, the top and the bottom ones are different, so don't get them mixed up or confused. And just like the bottom pin, cleaned it up, wiped it down, and then added some more of the brake parts lubricant to it. It's a little bit off camera, but put it back in place, made sure the rubber boot grips the slider pin and give it the old in out a couple of times make sure it's good and just like everything else i'm just cleaning up all the rust and little bits of loose material on the brake caliper before i put it back into place i'm also going to take the top off the brake fluid reservoir because i do have to back the pistons in a little bit and to do that i'm just using a old brake pad and a woodworking clamp you could also do that before you even start with the caliper still on the vehicle and use a C-clamp. There's other ways to do it, but e anyway, just make sure that the two pistons go back in evenly and far enough that you can install it over new brake pads. Also, make sure that you don't have an overflow in your brake fluid reservoir. I'm using the supplied brake lubricant for the retaining clips. And even though I put it on the retaining clips, there's still some on my gloves, so I'm putting it on the end of the brake pads as well. 
Now I put these in, I also take them out almost right away and I do spray them down with a little bit of uh, brake parts cleaner before I install them. So I do put the pads in, then take them out and then spray the, the face with some brake parts cleaner. I'm not sure if that's necessary, but again, if there's any factory dirt or grime or grease on the face of these pads, it probably doesn't hurt to hit them with some brake parts cleaner. So like I said, took them back out before I did anything else uh, and then sprayed the uh, brake parts cleaner on them. Is that step necessary? I don't know, but I did it. Then I put the pads back in and put some of the brake lubricant on the back of the pads. You don't really get too much brake lubricant in this package either. One of two things is happening. I'm using way too much or they just don't give you enough. I think probably one packet per side would be the correct amount for how much I was using. Now I'll put the little springs in there. Gotta be careful that they don't eject the brake uh, pads right out of your vehicle when you put both springs in. And then, like I said, I'm just using that uh, orange brake part lubricant on everything that you can't see. So any of the contacting surfaces on, uh, on the brakes, I'm just gonna throw some of that orange lubricant on there. I believe it's a silicone based lubricant. I have no complaints about how it works. Like I said, it, it just makes everything look rusty and, and therefore I don't like it. I just don't like the color. Now I'll slide the brake caliper back in place and put the bolts in the back end of the top slider pin first and then I'll put the bolt in the bottom slider pin next. And once those are finger tight, I will once again take the 17 mil to hold the slider pin in place and then run down the bolt on the back with a torque wrench. And the torque spec I have for those is 20 foot pounds for, for each of them. So 136 for the mounting bracket and 20 for the slider pins. And that's pretty much it. So before I do anything, I'm going to give the brake pedal a couple quick pumps with my dirty old shoes. And that'll help make sure that I don't overflow the reservoir when I go to do the driver's side brake. And that's pretty much it. I just put the tire back on and then go over to the driver's side. And the torque spec I'm using on the wheel lug nuts is 100 foot-pounds. So I got the vehicle jacked up again, driver's side's lifted, and 17 mil wrench and 14 millimeter socket to remove the caliper. Once the caliper is off, I'm going to hook it up to the strap that I've got hanging there and I'm just going to throw it onto the two brake pistons. Remove the inner and outer brake pads and this is the one that's the worst. Look at that angle on that top corner. So pretty bad. So that's why I decided to go with this pad with the, um, the, the little squealer warning. So like I said, I heated these up a little bit and then I used the breaker bar and a hammer and uh, it was pain. It was a pain, but they, uh, they came off eventually. Lots of liquid wrench, as you can see on the ground there. And uh, once I got that mounting bracket out, I probably hit the disc a few times and it was already loosened up. So I'm, I was really happy that I didn't have any issues with the discs, but you can see that the inside of that disc was actually pretty chewed up. And again, I cleaned up all of the, the matting surfaces for the, for the rotor as well as on the mounting bracket. Just to make sure it's smooth and to make sure that the disc rotor is gonna sit in there nice and flat. It's not gonna be at a slight angle that you can't really perceive. And then apply some anti-seize and sort of wipe it down, make sure it's not too much anti-seize. Before I put the rotor on, spray it down with some brake parts cleaner and then give the rotor a wipe down with a shop towel. Once that's done, install the rotor back onto the vehicle. And again, drop two lug nuts in there to hold everything in place. I did the cleaning of the, the bracket off, off camera. And now that the bracket's clean as well, I'm just gonna install some blue Loctite on the bolts again and put the mounting bracket back on the vehicle. And once again, 
The torque specification I'm using for the mounting bracket is 136 foot-pounds for each of the bolts. And I'm going to run those down with a small socket and then come in with the torque wrench. And as mentioned, the driver's side was a little harder because you're lifting up to tighten and that was just a harder move than pushing down with the, the torque wrench in this spot. And now I'm going to take the slide pins out and clean them up. And then lube them back up. Put it back into position. Make sure that that little rubber boot locks and give it the in-out, in-out treatment and make sure that it's moving freely and not binding up in there. And then same deal with the upper one. Again, they're not the same, so don't get them mixed up. Clean it up, put on some lube, slide it into place, and then give it the in-out. Making sure that the rubber boot locks onto the slide pin. Again, I probably should have compressed these on the vehicle um, before I even started. It probably would have been easier, but I'm just using a brake pad and a woodworking clamp. It worked. It's a little bit of a pain because it's got the dual pistons, but they went in. Just make sure that they go in evenly and that they're both well depressed. Once you hit your brake, it'll push them back out anyway, but a bit of a pain. And once again, I do spray some WD-40, clean up the caliper a little bit. This time I spray the brake pads with the brake parts cleaner before I put them in the vehicle. So I did learn something from last time and you can see the wear indicator is on that pad and that's gonna go on the inside. I'm not sure if it's important which side of the vehicle it's on, driver or passenger, but it does have to go on the inside pad because the inside pad is the one that's gonna wear more than the outside pad. And I put the pad retainer clips in place. Again, the new ones worked well. Some people say that the old ones should be retained and used, but I don't know, these worked fine for me. And I am, once again, lubing the ends of the brake pads. Whether that's actually necessary, considering I put the, the lube in the retainer clips, is up for debate. I would say it's probably not necessary, but I do it. And then I'll put in the second brake pad. Of course, making sure that you don't get brake, uh, brake parts lube on the face of the pad or on the rotor. Like I said, I am running out of the lubricant, so I'll spread it on the back of the brake pad. And then I'm going to use the orange stuff because I'm pretty much out on the inner pad. Like I said, so that I can't see the orange brake lube. Now I'll install the two springs into the brake pads. Good shot on my shoulder. And I've already lubed up a portion of the brake caliper. So now I'm just putting a little bit of lubricant on the face of the two pistons. And then I'll put the caliper on the mounting bracket. Reinstall the bolts onto the back of the slide pins. Tighten them up. And once again, with the 17 mil wrench, I'm going to, I'm going to torque the bolts on the back of the slide pins to 20 foot pounds. And now that that's in place, I'm just going to pump the brakes a couple of times just to see where the fluid level kind of levels out at. And it is, it's a little bit high. I didn't get any overflows or anything like that. So I do have a syringe. I'm just gonna suck about 15 mils of uh, brake fluid out of there before I take it for a drive. Again, put the tire on off camera, lowered the vehicle and torque the, uh, the lug nuts to 100 foot pounds. So now I'm just going out for a drive in the evening and I'm gonna bed the brakes in. So I went to the middle of nowhere. You don't wanna do this anywhere with a lot of vehicles, particularly behind you. Uh, they will not enjoy it. So for this, I brought the vehicle up to about 60 kilometers an hour or 40 miles per hour. And they did four 
fairly quick but smooth stops going from 60 down to about 10 kilometers an hour and then I did the exact same thing only this time going up to the 80 ish kilometer sort of 55 miles an hour sort of range and applying the brakes all the way down to 10 to uh, in that 10 to 15 kilometer an hour range so fairly quick stops uh, and that's why you want to make sure you're out in the middle of nowhere or you're in a spot where there's nobody behind you that's going to come careening into the back of your vehicle. Anyway, like I said, I did it four times at 60, four times at about 80 kilometers an hour. They bedded in well and everything seems to be working great. Anyway, like I said, I'm going to get onto the rear brakes next. Link in the description as soon as it's done. Thanks for checking out my video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.